Good evening and welcome to City Focus. I'm Marty Olson and I'm your host and I'm delighted to welcome an old friend. Certainly. A gentleman who I met, uh, it's got to be 35, 40 years ago uh, when you were running for Congress, I think. You were stepping up in the 2nd District and uh, you, were, you were a young attorney and you took the bait and you, and you hustled and you tried to take out uh, Sam Gadenson, as I recall. That was a long time ago, but we're on to other things now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, out of that, uh, and, and, and my guest, needless to say, is Glenn Carberry. And, and Glenn has been very, very active uh, in Norwich and uh, in, in southeastern Connecticut. He's a local attorney, and, uh, a principal in T-Cores and Broad Street in downtown New London, retired now. Yes, that's true. And... Uh, working with with very talented people down there in key cores and doing good work uh, I think primarily do real estate well, we had a very good good run but it's nice to be uh, retired now and uh, have time to pursue my hobbies which include travel and uh, it's, it's really great to see you again well thank you and another thing that Glenn did which I thought was uh, you know exceptionally positive for the region and that was he brought minor league baseball to southeastern Connecticut. I mean, that was something that you made a, a promise that you were going to do, and you stuck with it. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, you initially were looking at Groton sites, and you ended up at the, the industrial park in Norwich, where we have Dodge Stadium, and uh, with the Norwich Navigators initially, and the thing took off well in the early going. Yeah, we had a pretty good run. Uh, I think the fact that uh, we've had uh, different forms of professional baseball up there for about 30 years was certainly a boon for the area with the Yankees uh, team and the Giants team and then the Tigers and now the uh, Collegiate League and uh, we still got a very good stadium up there needs a little bit of work but it's in excellent shape so you never know what the future will bring uh, in sports but it's been a good thing for Norwich and for the uh, community and I know I've seen you up there uh, many times and uh, uh, people should continue to patronize it Particularly, it's, they have some of the high school and college games up there now, and that's a good thing for the community, too. Yeah, I think so, too. But it's interesting that the reason we've got uh, Glenn in tonight is, uh, is to discuss some, what are his passions. And it's something that, as we were discussing before coming on the air, something you've kind of gotten into a little bit later in life. It was not something you started in your 20s, but... Uh, so you hadn't been to like Europe until you were 45 years old. So we're going to, have to discuss travel. So as much as you've done locally, we're going to expand your horizons, our my horizons, and our audience on where you've been and what you do and why. I mean, wh why? What motivate? What has motivated you to to travel and where you go and what are the things that you're looking for when you visit a place? Well, it's it's a hobby that I've developed uh, mostly later in life in the last 20 years and uh, but it's something that's always been of uh, of interest to me you know when I was uh, when I was a kid I always used to like going over to my grandparents house because they had this uh, whole bookcase full of uh, years and years of National Geographic so I would sneak off whether it was at the Christmas holiday or when we were dining at grandma and grandpa's and uh, just start reading about all these different faraway places and ruins and other countries and I really thought like that's something I'd really like to do someday but uh, you know I didn't know how I didn't know when and uh, you know for many years it wasn't really something we could do because I was busy with a young family and a professional career and uh, so our trips like a lot of people you know you might go down to Pennsylvania or go to Disney World or possibly uh, you know, go to a Caribbean island or something. But then, I guess around the time I was 45 or so, where our family went on a cruise to Europe for about 10 days, I think it was Barcelona to Rome or something like that, and we just started traveling. 
And uh, now 20 years later and uh, many trips later, uh, I've now been to 60 countries around the world and uh, been able to take my, one of my other passions of writing and started writing about it. So that's how I kind of became a uh, travel writer uh, in my later years. And, now. and you're doing this now for fun or do you, do you, are you able to earn, a, earn money doing this writing? No, it's, an, it's entirely for fun and I think uh, uh, like that's a point we'll, we'll talk about uh, maybe, maybe a little later. But uh, it started out I was writing some articles, uh, just posting them on LinkedIn or and then uh, I had some friends at the London Day and I was telling them about this round the world trip we were going on and they said, well, why don't you write some articles about it? So I wrote some articles uh, about our trip going to different uh, countries and then uh, uh, after a while of uh, doing that, decided to take the articles and put together uh, a book. And, uh, you know, we printed it up and uh, I see you have one there. The uh, Epic Destinations uh, Travel Magazine. Uh, let's which, see here. Uh, there we go. Yeah, there you oh, go. Yeah. And uh, that's a, with about 120 pages of uh, pictures and articles uh, of different places I've been around the world. Uh, that was done in 2017, and since then we've distributed about a thousand of those to school, uh, high school, and middle school kids around the area, and also given a few talks. So uh, that was kind of the second phase, like, well, now I guess I'm a travel writer because I wrote a, a travel book. <laughs> and uh, then I was thinking about another book last year during COVID when we were all sitting around watching too much TV. And uh, the graphics uh, design person I worked with said, well, maybe instead of doing a book, you should do a website. So we put together this idea for a very comprehensive travel website and uh, that's what it's all about now. It's, uh, uh, the website is called The Traveling American. So if anybody's at home or wants to look it up, you just put those words, The Traveling American, into Google, and uh, this will usually show up as the first, uh, first item. So um, uh, I you think you could just put The Traveling American in up in the URL. Yeah, line there yeah you and, put it up and, there, and, too. And that'll just bring it right show to there it. also. That's the... Uh, the address for it. So the Traveling American, uh, just to kind of briefly run through it, it uh, I've been doing so much writing, we now have 225 articles and over a thousand pictures there and uh, tried to organize it in a way that would be useful for people that travel. Uh, so um, like if you go to the, um, the home page of it, which was uh, just up there, uh, there are really four categories. There's uh, one category that deals with different countries or cities. You can look up uh, different regions of the world. There's another category that deals with what I call epic destinations, which are organized by category of types of destinations. So there's another category on hotels and cruise lines. And a final category on uh, how to plan a trip. Because a lot of people say to me, gee, I'd love to go on a trip, but I don't really know where to start who to use, things like that. So, um, like if you go to the... Um, now, travel agents, uh, is that a posse business? People book their own stuff? or uh, I, I think it, they're doing a different kind of function these days because so many people can do things themselves. At home. And, yeah, and what I've tried to do is add this as a tool a resource so if people are interested in a particular country or partic want to see a particular um, uh, type of ex travel experience they can look it up and find some some information I think they still uh, having uh, experts to rely on to do your bookings can still be helpful for some people um, but you know we're living in a world where information there's plenty of it you, if you have the ability to sort through it you can do a lot of this yourself yeah. So now, 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 when you started, did you uh, start domestically, or did you jump out of the country on, at the get-go? It, it's it covers the entire world. Like, um, uh, I think there's about uh, 50 articles about places in the United States, and about 150 about from other countries around the world that that we've been able to go to and and see a little of, or see a lot of. In some cases, we just got back from a 
long trip to Morocco, and I was able to really experience uh, that interesting country. But the way we set up the website, um, like this, like this is one page, is if people go onto the website and click on a particular topic, it's set up by topics. So like one person likes to travel and see animals, another one likes to go to beaches, another one likes culture and entertainment. So we have like 15 different categories. If you click on each of those categories, food, historic places, landmarks, it'll take you to an, a bunch of articles on that topic. Uh, because people travel for different reasons. And uh, uh, I've kind of learned that the hard way because my wife and I don't always like the same things. She <laughs> likes the food and culture and shopping. And, and uh, you know, like my wife and my son, you want to go out and look at these old rocks, <laughs> archaeology or other things. So it all has to fit together in a trip that makes and, and, sense. And you'll go to Wrigley Field. Yeah, and, and, and go to some sports along, along the way. So um, I've tried to develop a site that, that kind of looked at, people can look up at what, what interests them. So let's assume uh, someone's interested in uh, doing something like going on a lot of hikes or outdoor activities. If they uh, click on that page, which is called uh, Walks and Outdoor Activities, uh, there'll be examples of like uh, eight or nine different hikes around the world. Uh, that people could uh, could go on uh, that are exotic, um, like that. Like uh, there's a hike uh, along the shore in Morocco. There's another one walking a beach in India. Uh, I found uh, this summer there's a beautiful trail along the old Erie Canal in upstate New York State. I didn't realize that the Erie Canal basically still exists and people can take boat rides on it, they can walk it, they can jog it, and there was something interesting to do there. Uh, I've been out uh, in New Zealand uh, hiking uh, through the volcanoes, which is like being on a, a different planet. So whatever someone's interest in, uh, I've tried to cover different types of interests and, and write about them, although we're all interested in, in, in different kinds of things. Um, we've also covered different uh, hotels around the world, uh, cruise lines, um, and resorts, and things of that uh, that do, nature. Do, do, do you have a a particular type of uh, travel or vacation that you prefer? You mentioned resorts. You've mentioned cruising, hotels. A, a uh, little bit of a little bit of everything. You know, sometimes you want. Uh, to go and just relax and other times you want to go explore and sometimes you want to do um, a little bit of both. I think that um, when people try to do too much and you're packing your suitcase and moving to the next hotel every day, that tends to wear people out and not provide the same type of experience. On the other hand, you can sometimes get oriented to a section of the world by taking a carefully planned cruise if they have good itineraries and good excursions where you can sample different things and then go back and, and see more of it. Uh, so the different approaches work for different people. Some people just want to go to a resort, plant themselves for nine or ten days and relax. And there's nothing wrong with that. We, we all do that. And other times uh, you don't have that much time. Or, or the resources to maybe do that. So what we've tried to do in The Traveling American is also put in uh, dozens of places that families can go to, that you can take a day trip to, that maybe won't cost you cost uh, much money or any money to get in. Uh, tremendous resources uh, and places you can go uh, for free around the, uh, this country and in, and in other countries. Although it's ironic, in a lot of countries I go to, it'd be like, the equivalent of 50 cents for a local citizen to get in, and then Europeans and Americans, $15. So, <laughs> I think I suspect that Southeast Asia may be something along those yeah, lines. Yeah, there can be there can be places like that, or uh, India, which is which is also interesting. So, for those people that are interested, and want to find out a little bit more about different parts of the world, uh, places where uh, there might be an interesting resort to go to different cruise lines, uh, look up the Traveling American 
and uh, I, I hope you enjoy it. We have about 4,000 unique visitors a month right now visiting oh, wow. the website, and uh, it's growing uh, in the last year uh, a pretty good pace. And, uh, you know, it's something I hope to continue uh, doing. Have you have you been published in anything like Con, is it Condé Nast or Condé Nest uh, travel uh, magazine or any newspapers or any other travel publications? Uh, I haven't looked to do that at this point, um, and uh, don't want to get too far off topic here. But like everything in our society right now, there's a financial part of it, and what I wanted to do with this website is it's absolutely for free. There's no subscription to see it. There are no advertisements. There are no product placements. We don't seek or accept any commissions for what we do. It's just information for the people. And uh, because uh, there's such a, a emphasis these days on any magazine that you, that you would get, they're putting in articles about about things and they often get commissions or referral fees and I'm sure everyone's uh, doing uh, an honest job but I wanted something that would be just informational and so far we've been able to do that and that's the long-term goal I have a passion uh, and hopefully I'm provide some information that will be useful to people yeah. I know my brother-in-law followed my advice on a trip to Turkey and he had a good time and he liked the guide so at least one person was happy with the advice I, I gave. I suspect there's been many more. <laughs> well, uh, have you done any 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 rail travel? Uh, nothing, nothing extravagant yet. There are some uh, excellent uh, luxury rail services in India. Uh, there's one uh, that goes to some of the historic places. There's one in South Africa. Uh, there's some uh, luxury rail things in uh, Europe, but I, no, the answer to your question, no, I haven't uh, I've done that yet. Um, you get kind of mixed reports that people say they either could sleep on a railroad car with the whistles and the clitter, <laughs> clitter clack or whatever, or they could, they either love it or they hate it, but they are very luxurious. Just as some cruise lines can be, can yeah, be very luxurious. The, the rail travel, uh, I think the, you know, go in Canada, going from from uh, you know east to west is supposed to be a, a, a oh yes a terrific uh, a trip. The, Good way to see the the mountains and the beautiful uh, uh, British Columbia and some of those places. Yeah, that that is one. And I guess there's a train in Alaska that's supposed to be very good to see some of the wilderness. Yeah. So that's good. Have you visited all the continents? Uh, yes, we have. We visited. Um, Including Antarctica. Uh, well, you got me there. I have not visited <laughs> uh, Antarctica yet, and uh, uh, there are more and more cruise lines that are now going to Antarctica. Really, that you I might didn't have know that. Seen? They go down to uh, the Cape of Good of Horn, Cape Horn. Yeah. I guess it's Cape Horn, where the water can be quite rough, and then they go down from there to Antarctica, and uh, they're getting some pretty good reports. On that, I think it would be kind of fascinating. I mean, uh, I don't know how long it would be fascinating, but just yeah. uh, just something different to say you've done it. You've been to the bottom of the world. Well, the the experiences you get travel kind of give you a different perspective on the world. I know it's uh, uh, it's uh, been good for me and my family. My our son was able to travel with us when he was younger, and. Uh, uh, quite a bit and it broadened his perspective of the world. You see other people, you learn from their cultures and uh, um, you know you just uh, have a broader perspective about things around the world. Now when you um, are traveling overseas or in different countries, uh, how much do you put into preparation to understand the customs and, and laws so that you don't get in trouble like uh, We've experienced with the basketball player here recently where, you know, you don't want to do anything silly or stupid right. or, you know, Billy Hayes and Midnight Express when you oh, mention yeah. turkey. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think there are a couple things that can help with that. One is that um, I talk about this in a section of the uh, website. 
Uh, in many countries, it's a very good idea to use a private guide and driver. Um, in some countries, like the United States and parts of Europe, that's, that's pretty expensive. But in a lot of countries in the world, um, if you find a good private guide and driver, for about $100 a day, you can have an air-conditioned vehicle and someone to take you to all the places that you want to go, uh, to see the things you want to see, to spend a little more time here, a little less time. And that obviously provides a buffer that they know where to go to get the tickets. They're not buying something from some guy on the street. And, uh, and, and that's one thing that, that helps quite a lot. Uh, it also takes a lot of planning to do a trip. And uh, I probably spend about uh, at least two hours of planning for every day of a trip that I end up going on. So if, if I've been away for 10 days to see some place with, with my wife, uh, it probably took 20 hours of planning to research everything and get it, get it laid out. Uh, but as a result of that, we often get to see a lot more than than uh, other people do. Yeah, well, uh, uh, I've been very fortunate that way. But it, 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 it's something I enjoy. So to me, it's not work. Other people would be like, look, I just want to go on the trip. I want to relax. I don't want to spend all this time. And I've tried to bridge that gap by doing some of the work for people and putting it uh, on the website. And hopefully, people will find it helpful. Yeah, I mean, it, there are some places I've been. I mean, I've mapped out my own yeah. trip. And there's others where you know I've gone and uh, you know, I've used Greyline. I mean, get on a bus and let them tool around and have a tour guide and go that route. Right. I don't know if you have used uh, the professionals in that regard, or you tend to map out your own pretty much all the time. Uh, it, since since we started the trips to Europe 20 years ago, we've been pretty mu much mapping them out ourselves. And uh, but you got to do your homework. Now, one thing that happened like 15, 20 years ago, and it's not the same now, but like when TripAdvisor first came out, that was, uh, uh, you know, groundbreaking in that individuals could get information from other travelers about, okay, I went to this site and it wasn't worth it. You know, the beach was dirty or there were, uh, the, there were too many waves or whatever. And so that was a useful tool because it put the tr empowered the traveler to be able to hear from other travelers what was going on, uh, and they also could consult, you know, good professional travel agents who have who have been through these experiences. And so, so that was a useful tool. Although so many of the reviews now, like they even say reviews on Amazon, are are fake reviews. And uh, uh, in some countries, you can't trust the reviews at all because the review is, oh, I went to this, uh, this hotel and uh, the clerk uh, is such a wonderful person. I've never been treated that, that way before. And it turns out it's the guy's cousin that wrote all the reviews. But there is so much information out there that, that people can find out stuff on their own. But you have to have a discerning eye, I guess. Uh, like even with cruise lines, you have to read the discussion, the descriptions of the ex excursions very carefully. One, one might say, we will then travel and you will see such and such. Well, does that mean you're going you're gonna to drive by it on the bus and crane your neck? Or does it mean that um, you're going to stop for pictures? Or does it mean you're going to get out of the van uh, get or the bus and have an hour there to walk around by yourself with a guide or whatever? You have to read these things very very carefully and you know obviously we've all had some bad experiences sure. along the way and been disappointed but we've also had more more good ones by doing the uh, the research yeah have you been behind the Iron Curtain yeah so as a matter of fact uh, we spent uh, <clears throat> four or five days in Ukraine back in 2013 and 2014 just before the Russians came into Crimea uh, the, f the first time, and uh, uh, Odessa is an absolutely stunning, beautiful European-style city. Uh, Crimea, where the Russian submarines have been based for the last 20 years, is it, it's it's uh, a little more drab and not as exciting. But that's a 
terrible tragedy what's going on there now, and hopefully uh, there'll be a positive solution to that. But yeah, have you been into Russia or China? Yeah, with St. Petersburg. So we saw some of the best that Russia had to offer, and we spent a couple weeks in uh, three or four weeks in China, where I had some excellent guides to see the terracotta warriors, and uh, you know, walk on the Great Wall, see things in Beijing, uh, Hong Kong. So we've seen, uh, see, seen a good chunk of, of those cities and a lot of uh, India. Have you, well. have you had a chance when you're in those places to actually interact with, uh, with, with the locals? Or do, or, or do they keep you isolated and away from, from them? I try to always go on walks by myself with, uh, when I'm in a place or with the guide. And I found that those were some of the most rewarding experiences. Just, you know, they'll introduce you to the shopkeeper or you're walking and talking to people and they're as curious about us as we are about them. And, you know, I, I, I kind of took the bold step of calling the website The Traveling American for a reason. And that is that I take uh, the role of being in another country as an American very seriously. Uh, I'm very proud of, of what this country represents. and. I know that I, I, when I watch TV a lot, of, I hear people saying, oh, you know, they don't like Americans in this country. They don't like us there. They don't like us here. Marty, I've got to tell you, that is absolutely incorrect. In all the countries I've been, almost every country there are people that tell me their dream would be to have their children or have themselves be able to come to America. Not that there aren't great countries out there that have a you know, wonderful style of life and cultures and, and uh, experiences. But wherever I go, people still carry that dream of America. And I don't know if that always gets through on all the news sources we well, have, you, but you, all you, the yeah. people I meet are, are, very, are very proud. There, you also hear things like, oh, the French don't like to serve Americans. Ridiculous. Europeans don't tip. That's one of the, <laughs> and when an American walks in, the waiter is going to be so nice to you in Paris. But I'm always reading these things saying, oh, they don't like Americans in Paris, they're rude to them. Ridiculous. They want you because Americans will lay down 15 or 20 percent. Europeans are the cheapest in the world when it comes to tipping. <laughs> <laughs> I'm generalizing. Well, there are I, many I, wonderful I, Europeans out there. But when you're in Paris, you get you. Do you go to the Louvre? Do you do you get a chance to to visit uh, you know the French Riviera? Do you go to if you're in London? Do you go to to, to the uh, you know the, the castle? Do you do you see what do you do? What do you see? I mean, I, I went on a class to uh, to, to London yep. about 20 years ago, and the place oozes history. Yes. I mean, it just oozes. I mean, if you, you just can't help but be uh, drawn to yeah, it. Yeah, when you're in the Tower of London and you realize that, that, you know, how many centuries of kings and, and people were imprisoned there, people fought battles there, people were coronated there, or uh, you're walking down a hall in, uh, I mean, down a street in London and you go down into the Churchill War Room yeah. where he slept for three years during World War II. Uh, the West, the Big Ben, and all that stuff. There's, um, the ancient cultures have a lot to teach us uh, as Americans, but I think Americans also uh, traditionally have had something to teach other people. That the fact that these countries have some long histories, sometimes they also carry long grudges, and that traditionally has not been the the way of our country to be able to even fight a war with great powers and then have those peoples and those countries become our allies and friends and our closest places. That's a great thing about this country that we, that we need to continue. Because I have been to other countries where they still hate the people over the border from something that happened 500 years ago. And I, I respect their perspective, <laughs> but it, it, it's, it's a different way of thinking. So I'm, I'm learning from people and, and hopefully you know, bringing some other ideas. Yeah, well, to people I, I concur with your, your yeah. uh, attitude regarding America and, and our, our role in the world and yeah. being proud and, uh, and but also when you're traveling, being respectful of where you are yeah. uh, and not be the, the quote unquote ugly American right. when you're you know, 
a loud, boisterous, and just kind of, you know, you're the center of attention. I mean, you got to be a little bit, I think, a little bit cooler than that. Right, right. That you're, that when, uh, like when I was on this trip in Morocco and we went on a, a, a trip to the Atlas Mountains where the, uh, uh, there's a long, uh, long tradition of uh, the local uh, of people there. They brought you into a house for, to share a meal and, uh, you know, you ask, you ask them, what, 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 do, what do I do next, basically? And uh, people are very, very welcoming, though, you know, in, in most of these countries. But you, you don't act real loud when their call to prayer is going on in Turkey or something. You know, you have to respect the, the local uh, uh, traditions and, and learn and listen, you know. Yeah. Now, um, you, so you've been to all continents except for Antarctica. So you've been to South America. Yep. Um, where have you been in South America? I've never been there, it's, and it's, uh, it's a tug. I'm not sure I'll get there or not, but it, uh, it well, looks fascinating. It is on the list to get to a little more, but I, we spent a lot, a lot of time in Brazil, Argentina, Uruguay, which is a beautiful country, you know, a little bit of Venezuela. Uh, I'm not including Central America, but Costa Rica and, yep. and places like that, but... We've, we've been there too, but I do want to get down to uh, Chile and uh, uh, Colombia and a few other places. We had a few trips that were scheduled that got postponed because of COVID and uh, trying to get those uh, rescheduled, but I do want to get down to South America some more. We spent a lot of time in Asia uh, in the last decade, which was a good time to go and see a lot of the countries there that, I, that I'd wanted to see. but. Uh, my wife said, look, I'm with these long airline flights, they're out from here oh, on in. Asia, Asia's <laughs> a long There's I mean, no my, easy right. way to get to Australia. No. It's 19 hours if you fly east. It's 19 <laughs> hours if you fly west. There's no, there's yeah. no easy way to get there. Yeah. Well, I mean, my, my ex-wife is from Indonesia. Okay. And uh, I traveled there three times. And, oh, to and, Bali. And, 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 and to and Bali. And, and, and she was from Jakarta. Java. And, yeah. But in that environment, being with a native who knows their way around, can cut through a lot of stuff. Oh, and, yeah. And, and even in terms of negotiating, uh, yeah. if you're going to hire a, a driver and, and things of that nature, where you're not getting, uh, we may be paying something that we think is a bargain, but over the there, local rate. Yeah. Uh, we're getting, you know, getting hammered. And, and, and some people have a lot of, a lot of, uh, uh, they, they, they don't feel comfortable with the uh, culture in some other places where you negotiate for everything. You know, how much is that rug? How much is that for that blouse? Yeah. Well, and, Indonesia, uh, everything's, you know, everything's, everything's, everything's negotiated. And uh, when you go to the Grand Bazaar in Turkey, which has 2,200 stores, <laughs> uh, you know, everything is negotiated. And if they don't have that item, they'll run over to another uh, booth and get it for you. From, from one of their uh, uh, one of their brethren, uh, and some people are my wife. My wife says I'm terrible. I'm a I'm a lawyer. She says I'm a better negotiator than you are. She says you, you paid too much for that briefcase, or you know I got I got a shirt for five dollars, and she's a lot better at it than I am. I must give my wife Kim credit for that. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but, but but it is different, and it it, it can be a little bit uh, yeah. intimidating if you're yeah. you're not accustomed. You, you go into you know the Stop and Shop or Walmart or Target. I mean, you know, the the magazine is three dollars. It's yeah. not, well, it's ten. Yeah. No, I'll give you fifty cents. And yeah. Back and forth until you get to three or three and a quarter or whatever it may be. But uh, one one good thing that uh, it's n never a good thing, but one thing that came out of COVID was we traveled much more in the United States than we had, and that was very. Refreshing. There were a lot of places that you kind of always wanted to go to, but it never like seemed a destination in and of itself. So like, we went to Nashville, we went to Salt Lake City, uh, we went to uh, Texas for a week, and went to places like uh, Galveston and Fort Worth and uh, um, uh, and, and uh, Austin, and, and you know had really good trips to these places. So there's so many wonderful things to see in the country and I uh, Americans are doing that now last year I believe I read that the national parks had the highest attendance ever 
and you couldn't even get into some like Zion and others. You weren't there at 5.30 in the morning. You weren't even getting in the park that day. So um, there is a lot of wonderful things to still to see in this country, and it's unlimited, you know. Oh, yeah, and it's a, it's a big country. Get in the car and go. Get in the car and go. Yeah. Now, have you been to Alaska? Uh, that is a, a deficiency that I have not been there. Been to Hawaii, but not to, uh, not to Alaska yet. Um, and everyone that goes uh, generally enjoys it. Uh, we've been to a lot of the Nordic countries and seen, you know, some of the glaciers and, and uh, been fjords. To, been and to Norway? Up there. Yeah, Norway, Sweden, Finland, uh, Denmark. Um, so it's a big world out there. I doubt I'll get to see uh, all of it, but we're seeing what we can, and I'm trying to share through the Traveling American uh, website, and uh, I think, uh, did I tell you about the, the book, that the book is available to any of well, the we haven't people yet. out there? Oh, okay. I don't, uh, so go ahead. No, you're the host. <laughs> no, listen, I'm I'm, I may be the host, but, but I, I uh, want to make sure we get uh, topics that sure. I we discussed before we came on. Okay. And, uh, you know, I think this is a terrific uh, resource. And, uh I think, you know, it's the kind of thing, if it's on the coffee table, people will pick it up and look at it. Yeah, so like it says, uh, if anybody wants a copy of the, uh, uh, the travel book, uh, just uh, send, send me your uh, name and address and we'll mail one out. You know, we've tried to distribute it at libraries and schools around the, uh, the area, and I'm happy to share uh, the information there. I've been told uh, by my friends it's good in two places. Some of my friends say it's... Uh, good on the coffee table, and others say it's uh, good in the in the restroom. But <laughs> <laughs> that's where they read the articles. Yeah, I told well. so. <laughs> whatever, whatever works. Now, are, are there places since you've started uh, on on these journeys that you've revisited that you've found so interesting that, or are there things that you wanted to get to that you didn't, or maybe something grabbed a hold of you and you said, "Yeah, I really want to do that again. I want to." There's more here to to absorb. There's more more to this. Yeah, I think we've been to Turkey several times uh, because uh, growing up, I never had the sense that really the whole coastline of Turkey is was a large part of where the Greek settlements were throughout ancient times. That not just on the peninsula of uh, Greece, but also all along the coastline of Turkey, were full of uh, Greek uh, towns originally, and also uh, you find the Persian influence in in Turkey, and uh, um, there are just so many different peoples that were involved there. Another thing for people that are interested in biblical sites, um, it may be entirely look at the Bible. Uh, differently. A lot of the places that you read about in the Bible are actually in Turkey. All these places that are talked about in the New Testament and some in the, in the Old Testament are, uh, are in Turkey. And uh, it's very interesting when you see a site and you realize that's where these events in the Bible took place. Like uh, maybe a, a good example is um, Ephesus is a very popular uh, ruins uh, along the coast in Turkey. It's a well-known uh, site. A lot of cruise ships stop near there as well. And uh, it turns out that Ephesus in ancient times was the site of a huge uh, Greek and Roman temple to the god, uh, if I get this right, Artemis or Diana. And people would come from all over the ancient world to worship or uh, pray or uh, uh, you know, seek uh, guidance at this temple. And it turned out that even in ancient times, there was a whole tourism trade set up in Ephesus to deal with all these people that were coming from all over the world. Well, there's a story in the Bible that uh, it seems like it's, it's probably true that uh, uh, the disciple Paul went there and started preaching, don't go to that temple. That, that's, that's a bunch of bunk. Don't go to that <laughs> temple. Let me tell you about what you really should be doing. And it turned out the local chamber of commerce grabbed him, brought him into the theater. There's a huge theater there to this day. It sits, sits like 15,000 people. And they're trying to decide to do, do with him. The local businessman wanted to throw him in jail <laughs> because he's like, he's ruining our business. He's telling people on the street not to go to the temple. 
And I'm thinking, well, that could, <laughs> that was 2,000 years ago, it could happen today. And in the end, they just kind of banned him from town for like, for like two years. And then <laughs> when you visit uh, that theater and you realize that all these different things are going on, it kind of shows you that history doesn't change all that much. Yeah. It's just the, the issue may change <laughs> as to who's, 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 who's head, off with his head, who's, yeah. who it is. But you find these uh, interesting stories as you travel around yeah. the world. Now, as you've been in different places, have you found that uh, sitting here in the United States, uh, in Norwich and New London, you and I, that uh, you know, the stereotypes of different places and peoples around the, the globe um, that we get here through our media. When you're visiting these places, do you find that uh, the, the stereotypes fit, or are you finding that, boy, the, you know, what are these people looking at? Because it's, mm. it's so much different, and it's so much better, or maybe not. Well, but the, 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 I don't know what things were like 30 years ago or 60 years ago, but we definitely live in a global world now that is much closer that people uh, know more, a little more about each other, that language barriers aren't, aren't what uh, they used to be in terms of English is spoken in a lot of places and people have their phone to talk to, to translate if they need to. Uh, so a lot of those barriers have been broken down. And uh, times do change. I, I, I still remember being really shaken up watching uh, uh, the movie The Killing Fields about Cambodia years ago. If you had told me 30 or 40 years ago that I would ever go to Cambodia, I would say, you're crazy. I'd never be there. Look at what happened there. And the nicest people and friends and uh, the guides that I met, the guide that I met over there, I still uh, refer people to because um, uh, he's a wonderful fellow. Um, it, it was like a, a generation goes by. The same thing in Vietnam. We had a very young guide, uh, 21, took care of my, my wife and I, drove us all around. And, you know, there was no big stigma about the Vietnam War, American soldiers. It was just like, yeah, you know, we had a war with the French. We've had, been, had wars with the Chinese trying to dominate us for centuries. We had, uh, you know, Japanese invaders here. Uh, Americans are fine, you know, and, and, and just like the month before I was there, I think an American aircraft carrier had come into Da Nang where we were staying which was like the world was upside down because 50 years ago they were fleeing to hang out of, right. out of there. So I think that um, it does break down some of our misconceptions about other places in the world to see them and encounter them. And who knows, you know, in 25, 30 years, uh, we may be visiting Iran uh, uh, with, without a second thought. Uh, it's difficult for me to feel comfortable about that concept personally right now because of the view of, of, of their government and the fact that they never have apologized for taking our diplomats hostage for a year. But I might feel completely differently. There'll be different people in a different circumstance just as America is now different. Um, so I don't know if that answers well, well, your question, well, but it, it, it gives me, uh, and the, I think the audience kind of, you know, a, a, you can't be looking at things in a static mode. You've right. got to be, you've yeah. got to be, uh, you know, kind of open-minded about what you're doing and where you're right. going and who you're dealing with. Yeah. But I will say, hist the history is much more important to people in other countries than it is here. America lives in the present and the future. A lot of other countries live in the past. I hope that doesn't change. I think our country will move forward if we keep focused on the future and making the future better for ourselves and, and for the world rather than, than looking to the past because I've seen how negative that can be uh, in other countries, uh, like when I was in the Balkans and the problems that uh, Croatians and Serbs and others have had are mostly based on incidents that took place hundreds of years ago. Uh, so, you know, it's, uh, we, we have to get beyond that, I think, sometimes. Yeah. Well, a point that you made early on in the program, which I, I uh, concur with, and that is that the, you know, for those who, who argue that, you know, America is, uh, you know, 
Sys, you know, sys, sys, systematic, uh, I can't even talk Systemically? Here. Systemically racist and a, a series of other negatives. Um, if it was as bad as some of these folks would say, why in the world are people still clamoring mm. to come here by the thousands every day? It's, <laughs> this, that, 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 that image, well, it's still there that this We is should hold ourselves to a higher standard, you know. We, we, we really have to because we present ourselves to the world as being uh, special and trying to achieve great things for all people. We do fall short of that mark in many respects and have throughout our history. Uh, but we have to keep striving and keep the focus on that. And I think when we see what's happening with other people from around the world wanting to come here, that there is still that, that dream of the best chance of things getting better for me and my family is in America, and it is for people in America. You don't see China is supposed to have this, uh, this great economy, which is uh, uh, beginning to show uh, slippage. You don't see people flooding the borders from Laos and uh, uh, Vietnam and other places to go work in China. No. Nor, nor Russia. And uh, um, I think there are reasons for that. So, so we have a lot of lear to learn. I have a lot of lessons to learn. Maybe I've learned the, the wrong lessons, but we just keep trying to well, learn the right ones as, you, you work through hard these experiences. And you, you have, a, like I say, an open mind, and, and uh, meeting people and information breaks down barriers. And when you, when you're, when you don't know the other guy, that's when often you find that people have uh, conflict because they, all they have to go on is uh, stereotypes yeah. and they are frequently not positive. Yeah, yeah. I think that's, uh, <laughs> that's, that's true. And, uh, and then, you know, that we've got so many other countries in, in the world. I mean, you look at, you mentioned South America and you know, Brazil, and there's a huge country that we you know, Americans really don't know much about. It's a, got abundant natural resources. Right. I mean, there's a country that perhaps with some different leadership could take off and become a, you know, a real global power. For both Brazil and Argentina are countries of great potential that seem to fall short of their potential and maybe maybe things will get better for them. We, we hope it's in the interests of the United States that South America prospers, you know, and that the people do move ahead. Yeah. For example, I enjoyed Rio. My wife didn't enjoy it as, as much. Uh, and I enjoyed Buenos Aires and things. Um, so that's a place I want to get back to. Yeah, well, I think that you've uh, only got a handful of minutes left here. What, what, what are your, your future travel plans? What do you got on the, on the docket moving, moving forward? Uh, we have a trip to South Africa hopefully taking place uh, early next year or the end of this year that I've lined up uh, several times with a, a guide there. He's ready to go, I'm ready to go. And Have you been there yet? Uh, no, we haven't, and uh, we have some, uh, they had some uh, pretty bad riots in the eastern half of the country about a year and a half ago. Uh, and uh, uh, things seem to have settled down, so I think a trip to Cape Town and getting there will be very educational. And want to get into some parts of like interior Europe, like uh, you know Bavaria, Munich, uh, Prague, um, uh, a little bit of Austria, like Salzburg, kind of that central part of Europe. So those are two trips that we hope to hope to go on, you know, and uh, and hopefully the airlines will do something to lower these fares. <laughs> they were <laughs> no one was traveling; <laughs> it was cheap. Now everyone's traveling again, and uh, uh, with uh, aviation fuel being expensive, uh, international travel is. Has gotten more expensive again, so hopefully that will remain under control. Uh, so, so you're going to take the quiz? Well, let's is try. Good time, we've, we've time couple, I think we got, we've got enough time for the quiz here. Enough time for the quiz. All right, we uh, we have a little little game here called Where in the World, and we're going to see how much our esteemed host <laughs> knows oh here. It, go to the uh, you. You'll get the first couple. I know. Can you tell me where in the world? Uh, not this one, but the next slide is. 
Well, that looks like the Roman Colosseum. In Italy. Okay, good job. What's the next one? That looks like uh, the Golden Gate Bridge in Frisco. You're right. All right. Boy, this guy's rolling. You know where this one is? What a contrast here. Let's see, we got this giant mountain and then this modern building, and it's not ringing a bell. Okay, that's Cape Town, South Africa. Okay, well, that's, that's where, where you're heading. The, that's where they had the World Cup about 16 years ago. In that arena. Yeah, in that arena. All right, stay with us. Okay. The next one. Now, this one's kind of unusual. Do you know what that is? Well, it's, a, it's an RV. Is it, is it the Carberry RV? No. <laughs> No, it's a very popular thing in Albuquerque called the Breaking Bad Van Tour. <laughs> they actually put you in a van that's identical to the one that was on that TV program used by the drug dealers, and they take you around to the different sites where uh, the thing was filmed. So to people that, you know how people follow different yep. TV shows, they're similar with the Game of Thrones. It has all these sites in Croatia that people go to. Now this one here. Well, it looks like we've got a, uh, a lava or a glacier. I can't tell. That's a glacier. Those are little people in the uh, walking on it halfway up. But that's a, a glacier in near Geringer, Norway, which is very popular. This next one here. <coughs> Boy, tough one here. There's no answer. That's not in that world. That's Mars. <laughs> that's, that's unfair. And here's the one for all of, for all of southeastern Connecticut, the last one we have. No one can get this. Where do you think that looks? It looks very familiar, doesn't it? Where do you think it is? I don't see it being in, in, south, in, in southeastern Connecticut. Kind of New Englandy though, isn't it? Well, it looks New Englandy. It could be. It could be in Maine. It could be Gloucester. It could be. Yeah, that's a good, good guess. That is Tokyo Disney World. Really. A replica of a an American seafaring village. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's, to uh, Tokyo Disney World is is over the top. It's really, really quite something. Yeah. Well, that was quite one of the something. questions too. I mean, when you're you did a good job. Good job. <laughs> Well, so you've done a great job, and I really appreciate you carving out an hour to come down here and chat tonight. This has been fun. Uh, but I mean, when you do travel, I mean, like the 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 uh, typical uh, tr travel destinations, the Disney Worlds, the Epcots, the uh, Universals in Florida. I mean, do you do those, or do you pass on those to do the Everglades? Uh, it, it, it's a mix, but we've certainly done a lot of the conventional things. We've visited a number of the Disney parks around the world and other places. Uh, Tivoli Gardens in uh, Copenhagen, which, which is in the book, is a very popular park with amusements and things. And it actually, the story goes that after World War II, it was visited by Walt Disney and Art Linkletter. And he was so impressed at what he saw there for family stuff and rides and parks and vans and food all mixed together that that's where he got the, the idea for Disney World and became well, such a thing. So travel can launch new ideas, it too. It sure can. Well, I want to thank Glenn for, like I say, spending an hour. It's been a fascinating conversation. And uh, uh, I, I look forward to having you back at some point. Uh, we can continue this discussion and we, we can follow and we get into some more detail on some, some specific trip or trips sure. that uh, we can hone in on. That would be One topic or something. Yeah, that, that, that would be, I think, be really a lot of fun. So I urge people to turn into the, the Traveling American and see what they can find. Okay, it looks like we are out, out of time. time. Thank, Thank you. you. This is terrific.